It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole, and this is quite a departure of a 1430 Connection for us at WNAV. In the studio with me is WNAV's news director, Jane Schlegel. She's helping me out with this interview. And our guest today is Terry Alley. She's afternoon drive announcer for WNAV. She has been with WNAV for how long, Terry? Uh, 21 years. But who's counting? I see. It's getting ready to say. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a very long time. 21 years, yeah. We don't normally share the stories that affect our team. We share the stories that affect those in our community. However, this spans both. And Terry is here to tell her story. Terry, a year ago, you came into WNAV crying. And I was here when that happened. Uh, Can you tell our listeners what happened? I was, um, I had allergies. Anybody who listens to the show has heard me talk about the good old allergies or seen the results of my, you know, allergies as, as they kick in and was having one of those days when I, I got up one morning and said, you know, this is really getting on my nerves as I'm doing my show on a daily basis. Let's go and get checked out, see if we can go ahead and get some meds going, because I was pretty sure I was getting bronchitis. Again, if you have allergies, you're not surprised at that diagnosis. Right, and this was before the day that you came into WNAV crying, yep. so you had gone to the doctor to had check out. had gone to the doctor in the process. She said, you know, we're going to go ahead do a chest x-ray, haven't done one in about a year. Going to go ahead, do that, get that over with. Got the chest x-ray, and she said, something just doesn't look quite right. We're going to go ahead and send you to AAMC, let a doctor over there run a couple of tests, see what's going on. On my way to work in March a year ago, the phone rang. The doctor said, do you have a second? Well, And the doctor specializes in what? In uh, pulmonary okay. issues. All right. Uh, again, allergies, breathing problems, right. lungs. They told you on the phone? Well, well, hold on, hold on a second. Let's wait to find out what. what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know the story. The listeners do not know the story. Yeah, well, it's, it's, you know, he said, "Do you mind? You know, do you have time to talk?" I'm assuming we're going to have a, you know, a normal. Well, this is what we've got going on. Easy conversation. Little did I know that yes, it was going to evolve into we have found that you have lung cancer. And um, did he did this doctor give you the option to come in to talk to him or was it just hey i've got something to tell you i'm yeah, telling you right now we need you in here uh-huh but you said you couldn't yeah, we get in right you. then no he didn't want me to come in then oh. he wanted me to start clearing my slate for a good period of time because there were a lot of tests a lot of doctors told you on the phone that you had lung cancer and that what yeah, and I know it's hard to to work. I came, um, but he, he as told, soon as I he told you something else. How how long did he tell you you had? Uh, you know, usually about six months. Um, is what the prognosis, and that's the immediately what you ask. Again, you know, I asked the questions, the hard questions. I guess maybe I should have waited <laughs> to ask the hard questions. But as it all starts coming, you want as much information as quickly as you can. And that's immediately. You know, I've been around enough ill people in my life to know that lung cancer is a tough one to beat. Mm-hmm. So how much time are we talking here? You know, how long do we have to do something? And quite frankly, with no treatment, maybe five to six months. Mm-hmm. You know, so this is an immediate issue. Let's go. Right. You know, was was what the conversation was revolving to. You stepped you in know. the door. You were crying, as <sighs> would anyone be crying to learn that they were just given this diagnosis. <clears throat> uh, how, do, how do we handle this? How do I not tell my boys yet? Um, you have yeah, two grown I, sons. I had one in his last year of college mm-hmm. taking finals, actually, as that phone call was coming. And I'm thinking this could, you know, just devastate these boys. Um, let's find out as much as we can. Keep it as quiet as we can until I know exactly what is going on. Now, being in radio, keeping anything quiet is next to impossible. Right. You know, it just is. For so long, I have shared my life 
with everybody. And that was very hard because, as you guys know, you're in here every day. You were here every afternoon. You know, the calls come and the listeners become family. So part of your family you're having to leave out of this discussion while you go into fight mode. You know, and immediately... You know, Donna, you've had this type of diagnosis. Immediately, you go to fight mode. You do. What am I going to do to stay on the right side of the dirt for as long as I can? You know, and from that day, it has been a year of, okay, now what do we do? Okay, now what are we going to do? You know, and... And this this has been exhausting. It has not been easy. You've had treatment on both sides of the Bay Bridge. It's been a lot of traveling. It's been a lot of depending on friends. You are a strong, very strong-minded woman. (laughs) We all are. Uh, You don't want to depend on anyone else, and you've had to do that, and that's been tough, yes? It's been hard. Well, you know, I'm so blessed because, you know, I have my family at home. I have my family here, which you guys immediately, you know, circled the wagons and put up the barriers and said, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to keep her safe. You know, when the hair started going, the hats started coming in. You know, I mean, you guys have kept that end going for me. Then I have a group of girlfriends who we made a pack in the beginning. You know, whatever you have to do to get me upright, you do. You know, if you have to pick me up, if you have to carry me, if you have to drag me, do not let me go down. And that's what they have done. You know, um, the ones who don't have full-time jobs have come in and and carried me to to the appointments and to the radiations and to the chemos and biopsies. I think everything in my body has been biopsied probably twice, maybe three times. And we're getting ready to run some more. (laughs) All right. Let's talk about that in a minute. Let's talk first. What kind of lung cancer did you have? I had um, non-small cell lung cancer. You were a smoker? I was a smoker. For how many years? Gosh, on and off, probably 15, 20. Lung cancer can affect smokers and non-smokers alike. Uh, let's see, according to the American Cancer Society, estimates for lung cancer in the U.S. were 222,500 new cases of lung cancer this year. About 14% of all new cancers are lung cancers. About 155,870 deaths from lung cancer. 84,590 in men and 71,280 in women. Lung cancer is by far the leading cause of cancer death among both men and women. About one in four cancer deaths are from lung cancer. Do not wait if you're feeling sick to go get seen by a doctor. I I did not feel bad at all, quite honestly, you know, aside from my allergies. I, it was nothing out of the normal. I was still doing my 40-hour week plus, not a day. Let's talk more about that when we come back. We're going to take a short break. This is Donna Cole. This is the 1430 Connection. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is my uh, news director here at WNAV, Jane Schlegel. And our afternoon drive time announcer, Terry Alley. Uh, Terry's sharing her story of diagnosis of lung cancer. Jane, we, we've all been uh, so impacted by this. I mean, I, I had breast cancer. It's gone. I'm cancer free. How did this affect you and everyone else here? Well, everyone, uh, Terry's a rock, has been uh, for years. How many? 20 some years. Uh, when I first came to WNAV as an intern, Terry took me under her wing in the studio to train me. Terry is our rock. She's not supposed to get sick. Oh, we can't afford to have her sick. And we she's, can't. she's been out now for a year. A year. Uh, Terry, a year. tell our listeners what you've been through as far as treatment. Oh, gosh. Uh, well, again, I've been through biopsies, I guess, uh, over a course of seven weeks. I had a biopsy just about every other day for the seven weeks, which led to surgery. Um, Unfortunately, the cancer had wrapped itself uh, around the main artery at heart and the vocal cords and um, the left lung. It had also gone into several lymph nodes. So they had to go in 
remove that portion of the lung, remove the lymph nodes, and unfortunately, to get it from around the artery to the heart, they had to cut the vocal cords, which um, has led to paralysis. Which has led to probably the hardest thing, not even being told you had six months to live. Yeah. The hardest thing for you, from what I've seen and from what you've told me, is what? How, losing the on-air. Yeah, yeah, because there's really, honestly, nothing that I've let cancer take from me yet. But the the, but, the inability to come here every day and be but part my of, job, yeah, it's that's been, the, been toughest. the toughest because everything else I have controlled. You know that was my agreement with cancer early on. You know I am not going to let you take anything from me that I don't want you to take. When it came time for the hair to go, I was not going to let. You know I caught up and said, oh, no, I don't think so. You know, it's time. Let's take it off. And it never left completely. Right. And you, you know, by the I way, you still, do look awesome. You always have yeah, looked awesome. I still was able to keep a little bit of the hair. Um, the one thing that the cancer has taken has been the ability for me to do a full-time air shift. And that's, that that's you're been just tough. Just that's because so much of my family's here. You know, between who is out in that audience every day and in this building, you know, that's been the very toughest. All right. So you've been through surgeries. You've been through a number of radiation treatments, through chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. You've been through hell and back. You thought you beat it. Well, yeah, for a couple of months, actually. I ended my um, chemotherapy and radiation in October and um, in December had an MRI, everything looked great. I came back for another just a couple weeks ago, and all of a sudden, it's back. Um, and that is the cruelest thing about this cancer. You know, lung cancer hides, and it pops up again. So, you know, now this time, it's it's moved. It, it has re-shown itself in the lung. It's moved to the adrenal gland, and it's moved to the bone. So, um, here we go again. And they told you what? Well, we can do the immunotherapy program here, mm -hmm. and hopefully that will give me a few years, mm -hmm. two to three. Uh, there is a program right now that I'm trying to qualify for at Johns Hopkins. From my lips to God's ears, I'm hoping he's listening. Mm -hmm. There's only about 100 people in this program, but this is a double dose of immunotherapy meds. Uh, and again, we're hoping there is one person, they said in the study, who has lived six years. Um, we're hoping that uh, if I can get into this program, that will give me a few additional years. And the immunotherapy uses your body's own immune system to fight the cancer and eradicate right. it. Right. My body right now is seeing is it as something that is growing inside and as something that belongs there. My body just decided to stop fighting it. So what this does is trains the body to attack it, and hopefully this will buy me some more time. You warrior know. mode again. And warrior mode again. Uh, this will mean being at the hospital every other week for as long as I live. I do not see this as a cure for me. Mm -hmm. I know that. I'm fighting. And until I draw my last breath, I will be dead then, but I'm not dying. You don't view this as a... I'm not dying. No, no, no. I'm just... I'm living. That's my buddy. I'm, <laughs> I am living. I am not dying. She's I'm a living. moving target. I am a moving target. Moving targets are harder to hit. Okay, but <laughs> we're going to talk about something. You and your friends are working on things not to say <laughs> oh. to a dying person. This is Donna Cole. <laughs> this is the 1430 Connection. We will be right back. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is WNAV News Director Jane Schlegel, who's acting as my support system because this is a very difficult interview, with our guest, Terry Alley, who's the afternoon drive announcer for WNAV, who's uh, fighting a fight for her life against lung cancer. And yes. you've been given a diagnosis of a terminal illness. You are fighting every day. I am and you living. Are, you are living. I am living. And you are doing a, an incredibly admirable job of doing it. You are an inspiration. Absolutely. God bless. I, uh, I'm fortunate because I have this time to live. A lot of people go outside and get struck by a bus. Mm -hmm. I've been put on notice. Do everything you want to do. Have as much fun as you can possibly have. Eat what you want to eat. Drink what you want to drink. Just go have fun. 
while you can. And you are drawing strength from family, from friends, from Absolutely. your coworkers, I, from food sometimes. You do post a lot of recipes on Facebook. <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows. <laughs> I love to well, cook. And I you cook. draw strength from, from God. You I also draw cook. strength from humor, which brings us to <laughs> things not to my, say to a dying person. My girlfriend and I, well, we laugh because you know, people a lot of times just don't know what to say to you. Right. You know, and it, it's uncomfortable, obviously, for them. So you try not to. Okay. But, but people will say things, you know, like, oh, maybe you shouldn't eat that. It could make you sick. And, and you look up and go, sicker than this, really. You know, or, or, you know, uh, as I was taking down my Christmas wreath, you know, a neighbor hollered over, you could fall and really hurt yourself. <laughs> well, we're past that now, you know. <laughs> so, yes, I. you have to laugh at, at, you know, some of the stuff that people don't realize, you uh, know, where it, it all now is kind of insignificant, you know. Anger, too, plays a role in, in illness. And w- before I ask you, Terry, and you, this is something you alluded to already, Jane, you were angry at the way the diagnosis was delivered. Yes. And many of us were. Tough. Can you share that? I just feel like our society is so out of touch with the humanness of our being that we don't handle information like we should. And so it shouldn't have been delivered over the phone. It should we- never have come over a phone line. Good God. Not to mention you were probably on your cell phone. <laughs> I was on the car phone. At that point, it's get this information to me. Let's work with it. Let's immediately. I would much rather you tell me right this second than wait and schedule an appointment for me for a week from now. Yeah. While all of us were flying off the handle and uh, upset, Terry was the most level-headed I of any was person. Going, oh, no, no. Okay. Okay, now yeah. where are we going to go from here? Right. Did you have denial at all? No. No. I didn't have time to deny it. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, that's the worst thing you can do is deny it. Mm-hmm. No. The things that were important to me once aren't so important to me anymore. You know, their perspective, everything goes into line. You know, I've had a lot of time in the hospital to think about what I want, where, how I want, what, where. Now I have the time to put all that into action. To this day, whenever you talk about this diagnosis, about the treatment, about your future, it's always your family first. Oh, absolutely. You can't. Stu- you can't put your. F- you're a woman, mm, and you no, are a mother, yeah. and you still can't put. No, she's a no. caregiver from. Yeah, no. Forever. No, I. Well, it's no sense. Why dwell on what I can't control? Mm-hmm. What do you want our listeners to know, your listeners to know about all of this? Are you uh, are you planning on coming back to WNA? I would like to. Mm-hmm. And when I went to the specialist uh, last week, she said to me, let's see what we can do to maybe open up some doors which will allow you to do more. Mm-hmm. There is a procedure they can try with the throat. The paralysis, you know me, I get excited. I want to run with it. And it causes me to hyperventilate. I have trouble breathing. Right. So there is something down the road that they could try, which is relatively simple. Mm -hmm. It's only an injection that may help that. But right now, the immediate need... Is kick cancer's butt again. Right. Is to get back in there and get on these immune programs. And again, it's not going... There's no cure. You know, that it, that's just what it is. There is no cure. You know, this is to give me more time mm-hmm. with my friends, with my family, and to maybe solve this for somebody else. These medications might be a cure to somebody else down the road. So if I can go out and throw that one last bomb at it and say, you know, I may not have won, but I did before it was over, then let's do it that way. I ask for God's grace every day so that I can go about this in a way that will make my family proud and uh, to make my boys understand that it's nothing to be afraid of, that it's something that we all face and that we face it with dignity and we face it with strength. And as long as there is a breath that I can draw and somebody to stand me on my feet, there will be a fight in my body. And on that note, Terry, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, and thank the listeners for their patience, for their questions, for being there. Please do not be afraid to approach me if you see me on the street. I love the hugs. Um, And Anne Arundel Medical Center, uh, Patrice, and the girls up there who made sure that I was getting that IV every week. 
And, um, you know, the women who draw the blood down in the basement, I know you are listening. You know, they always had the station on when I go in there. So, you know, please know, although you're not going to be seeing me every week, John Hopkins will, and that I just appreciate you all for everything you have done up until this point and for continuing the fight. This is Donna Cole, 1430 Connection. Thank you for joining us.